Hello everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snaps here. I'll be discussing horror movies with you guys in a very blunt way. I'm your host, Stephen Harold, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my spoiler-free review for Thanksgiving, which was released this past Friday, and it was directed by Eli Roth. Now, of course, as everyone knows, Eli Roth had directed a fake trailer for this film, Thanksgiving, back in 2007, in between the films Death Proof and Planet Terror, that grindhouse double feature that Quentin Tarantino and Roger Rodriguez had done. Now, when researching this movie and basically getting the thought process of this, of the Eli Roth coming back to the horror genre and give, doing a slasher take on what he's not very known for. I mean, like a lot of people know him for, you know, Hostel for fuck's sakes. And basically for Eli Roth to even just hear the interviews that he has done about promoting this movie and saying that he really wanted to do this film, like just a old school slasher type of film that of course, it's another holiday themed film. Where have we seen that before, right? And you know, I do have to give credit where credit is due because of the fact that with the story like this and with everything going on and the marketing for this film, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you stop and think to yourself, how many how like horror movies exist that are Thanksgiving themed, that are not, you know, thanks killing there's not many so now we finally have one and is this gonna be one of the ones that is talked about for the years to come let's get into it spoiler free exactly with the story of this film of course you know with after a black friday sale which by the way is very fucking accurate to uh what goes on in america people are trampling people left right and center uh people are beating the shit out of other people just to get a fucking goddamn TV that you didn't really fucking need, whatever, right? But the 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 basis of this is that the killer who is in this John Carver mask goes out after what had happened on this Black Friday sale, and a lot of people who are the targets of this killer just happen to kind of be there when that incident happened. Now, of course, when it comes to this story, it's definitely one of those things that is a staple when it comes to the slasher genre. I mean, like. This film literally copied a lot of things, or actually, I wouldn't really say copied, more like took inspiration from films like Halloween or Scream or Friday the 13th. And for Eli Roth to have this film and do this film finally, in 2023 nonetheless, you could tell he was having fun with this. And this is a movie with a story like this. It's a very slasher-oriented story. It's, it's appetizing, to say the least. And the fact that it's a whodunit again. And of course, when where was a movie that we've seen that was a whodunit, right? Besides like Knives Out or whatever, right? I mean, Scream. Scream is the big influence of that, of a whodunit. And we get that story really in this film. And you do kind of second guess, like, is it this guy or is it this person? Who is the killer in this movie? And you kind of sit there and think to yourself, who is it? And that's one of the best interesting takes is because it's not like Scream where it's like you can hand pick who it is. And it's like, yeah, that's the killer. This one with its story and how the characters are and how this film was developed in the way it was, especially from a film idea that was a fake trailer from 2007. Nonetheless, I do enjoy this story. When it comes to the cast and characters, I mean, they were actually spot on with this movie. I mean, like like I said, when it came to the Black Friday sale, all the customers, it is so, like, I went to this movie with my brother, and we fucking laughed in the beginning because of how dead fucking accurate it was with people cussing out one another left, right, and center, giving the middle finger, of course. It's in Massachusetts, you know, fucking they talk with a bastard accent, right? And fucking, I just love the fact that all these characters, even, like the town people, are so fucking accurate. Now, when it comes to the main characters of this movie, they serve their purpose in this film. Like I said, it's a very slasher-oriented type of film. You know, you have the characters that you care for. You have the characters who you don't care for. Um, they, if you're playing, a, if they were playing a character who is an asshole, you fucking thought they were an asshole. You had the slutty person, you had the smart person, you had the kind person. All the tropes that you could possibly have in a slasher film, this movie has. And all the characters, all the actors did a fine job with all these characters. And especially when it comes to the, the final girl, I guess you would say, in this 
this uh, standard kind of thing. The the main character of this movie, it's not like a um, oh like Laurie Strode or Sidney Prescott or there was some sort of motive that the killer went after them for. It was basically they just happened to be there, and you know the killer's just after them too. So to have that as a nice bait and switch for that, it's like oh okay, well that's actually pretty fucking cool. And with all the characters involved in this whole entire movie, like I said, there's not really a dull performance, I guess you could say, but I mean, at the same time, it is a slasher film, and Eli Roth was having fun with it and paying homage to all the slasher films that had come out with some shitty dialogue half the time, but nonetheless, I really welcome it. Now for the killer of this movie. Of course, the killer of this movie is basically a pilgrim, or as we wouldn't now call him the John Carver killer, um, who has a John Carver mask, and uh, what do I have to say about this ca uh, this character, the, the, the antagonist? Um, basically, I don't mind his outfit. I mean, obviously, his coveralls, you know, Michael Myers. Um, the pilgrim mask and the hat, nice touch. I love the fact that it's an actual hat. It's not like the pilgrim mask with the hat attached to it or molded to it, whatever. But when it comes to the mask itself, um, I'm not really much of a fan of the mask. Now, why am I not so much of a fan of the mask? Well, you have to remember, we literally just went to 2022, where we got this beautiful grabber mask from the Black Phone. And, like, even the trailer showing this mask off, it immediately became iconic. As for this mask, it has the basic blend of what I feel like is the Cupid mask from Valentine, or just any type of kind of mask that is used in the low budget slasher films. But if I was to give it like that inspiration, what was the inspiration for this John Carver mask? I would have to say it's definitely the, the Cupid mask from Valentine. Now, I know a lot of people will say that, you know, the mask has changed throughout the movie. Like the mask does change and then he kind of flips into a new one or whatever. But there's a nice little reference when it comes to that certain scene where a mask is damaged. And I'm like, I know that reference. But other than that, with the killer's uh, choice of weaponry, of course, Thanksgiving type of uh, uh, instruments, right? You got the axe, you got, you, you know, you got your carving knives, you got all the other stuff that is, you know, very synonymous when it comes to Thanksgiving. So I do like the fact that he doesn't have just one specific weapon. He has multitudes of weapons, but the axe, of course, if I was to buy the NECA figure, I'd display him with the axe. But other than that, when it comes to this killer and how it's portrayed, I do like the way it is. I mean, like, I like the fact that, you know, he runs. I do like the fact that, you know, he kind of has a Michael Myers motif to him, which, uh, you know, as soon as I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's Michael Myers. All right. But other than that, fine addition to the horror genre. One of the things that's a very good positive about this movie is the fact that Eli Roth is directing it. What is Eli Roth basically known for? His over-the-top gores and kills. Now, this movie has no shortage of them. Like, the gore in this movie and the deaths and the kills in this film are absolutely fantastic. Some of them, you get a nice chuckle out of me from this one. I mean, like, there was literally a few deaths in this movie where I literally, like, fucking started laughing because of how over the top it was, but yet it was so gruesome or whatever, right? Uh, when people die in this movie, like, you can tell they fucking feel it. And, it, I mean, it's not like Art the Clown from Terrifier, right? But nonetheless, when it comes to the gore and it comes to the kills of this film, anyone who loves Carnage Candy and loves slasher gore, slasher kills, trust me, you are going to be entertained when it comes to this movie. When this movie does pick up its steam when it comes to the good parts about this film, you do enjoy it. But of course, to me, there are some parts that you kind of don't really enjoy. I mean, like, the, basically the last act of the film, the climax of the film, um, there's a lot of, like, cutting uh, mistakes, I guess you could say. Like, uh, it kind of eggs on the whole, like, is there, like, teleportation going on here? I don't know if that's just an editing error or maybe the, that's... A reference to Jason or whatever but uh basically the third act of the movie is where you know it's the ending of the film you have to get this out and of course you know like the, there has to be a death there has to be the, the the killer has to be vanquished in a way right all slasher tropes 
Now, of course, when it comes to this movie, uh, especially with the ending, I feel like the ending was maybe, you know, kind of bad. Uh, you know, like it's one of those endings where it's like, oh, really? That's how it ended? Oh, okay. Um, and of course, you know, maybe the decisions that were made in the ending of this film are a little bit like, ah, uh, really? You know, uh, all right. I don't know if it's basically a tribute to some of the slasher films that, you know, had shitty fucking endings. But this movie, I wouldn't say it had a very shitty ending. It's more along the lines of it's a film that has an ending that's like, okay, you could have done better. Like, that's not the greatest ending. Eli Roth was set to do this film, and like he said in his promotional stuff when he was being interviewed, is that if he doesn't make another film, he's just glad he made this one. And for me to go into a theater with the little knowledge that was given to me, and I researched on everything when it came to this film, I got more hyped the, the days counting when this film was coming out. So coming to the theater and walking out of the theater, I will say, even though I have just the minor little flaws that are at the ending of this film and some little parts in the beginning or whatever. I do enjoy the characters of the film, the killer. Um, like I said, I do like the kills. I do like the killer's um, outfit minus the mask. Cause you know, the mask is like, ah, this won't stick with me. Um, but other than that, like the story, every character in this movie, it, the, the, the fact that I had fun watching this movie, you know, being in the theater, being able to enjoy another slasher film in the theater and being able to just like shut my brain off. Cause that's the thing about this movie is definitely a shut your brain off type of fun that you can have in a film. Now, some people, they don't want that. And my brother was definitely one of them. He didn't want that. He wanted something serious. Like, but for me, it's kind of like, it's Eli Roth directing it. I wasn't expecting something very fucking serious. I wasn't expecting the Halloween film of Thanksgiving. But nonetheless, when it comes to this film, I do believe when it comes to the Thanksgiving season, of course, I know here in America, you guys celebrate in November. Here in Canada, we celebrate in October. So it's basically like, well, do I have two ho uh, holiday movies to celebrate in October? Thanks Thanksgiving and Halloween? Maybe. Maybe I'll just lump this one into November because it's like, hey, at least it's a slasher film in November for Thanksgiving. Whatever, right? But other than that, I had a blast watching this movie. I do recommend you guys watching it. This movie should get more popular as it goes on. And I do think this film will become a staple in the horror genre as one of these films that you watch during the holiday season for Thanksgiving. Now, other than that, guys, that's it for me. And as for my rating for this film, I'm going to give Thanksgiving a 6 out of 10. So tell me guys, what did you guys think of Thanksgiving? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, make sure you also hit that thumbs up to subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified about all the other videos coming out on this channel. After this review has come out, me and Justin will be finishing off the Saw franchise with Jigsaw, Spiral, uh, the spoiler review for Saw X, and then eventually we'll be doing the ranking of all the Saw films from worst to best with me and Justin doing it. So anyways, guys, that's what's in store. And then, of course, just a nice little heads up for you guys as well. I'll be doing December, which we all know December has a lot of horror movies in there. So I'm just going to decide, since I missed out on my month of Halloween, I'm going to do a Christmas Horror Month instead, where I review some horror movies that came out for Christmas. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. This has been the Ginger Snaps here. My name is Stephen Harold, and I will talk to you guys later, and remember to stay spooky.